messing with this ramp setup again this is the uh full bridge just wound a uh, new coil for it that particular jar right there has 36 gauge on it and that's the first test setup i used basically what i did was i was running too high of a coupling the primary was way too close to the secondary without proper insulation between them it did seem to run fine I, I really with that arrangement i didn't see too many flashover arcs going on apparently over time it did sort of jack up the windings i had since then temporarily used this coil so this is 32 gauge jar is a little bit bigger while that also worked i basically just rewound the old jar with new wire also this one right here so this is the same exact former size that's on the uh, half bridge ramp set up over there in the middle and so once i'm done winding that i'll have an identical coil to that other one to test on the full bridge so as you can see um, it's a good deal smaller than this other one i had going on the test rig what i basically had going on here was i see uh put a dc cap on there and i was testing it at dc so i didn't really design that bridge down there to uh run continuous wave with a coil frequency of over 400 kilohertz like this one right here and do it for a little bit it's not something that i'd want to i'd want to have it set up for that so the time being it's kind of cool just running it from a uh, low voltage dc using the interrupter to get interrupted arcs and just sort of seeing how changing the phase angle changes the output and as i've noticed in the past you know what might seem like the best setting with straight D dc like this might not be the best setting for trying to get ramped arcs that are the longest i've got the logic on right now off this little supply voltage into the bridge is going to be 31 volts right here off this dc supply i'm just going to play with the phase angle with the uh, probes on the scope here just picking up the voltage in the air so i'll cut that on so first of all About 436 kilohertz is what this is running at, but just kind of wanted to show that sort of elongated rise in the beginning of the on times. It's taking a while to get up in that voltage. So I'm just going to focus in on that while I adjust the phase angle. So you can hear the, the arc output change, but you also see... The way that the way those arcs propagate, you know, changes drastically. To add more, you need to drop that frequency there and add a little capacitance to get it going again. Low on times like that. And if I adjust that back down from there. You see, actually get it to draw out a little bit more. If I was to adjust this to get the best arcs at the lowest on time, does that mean that this is probably running at the most appropriate phase angle for much higher output? I would like to think that would be the case. I don't know maybe like maybe something along those lines take it back to uh, the low BPS so 
So with the adjustment I just made, test uh So that's how it runs the really low on time. If I cut this one back on after removing the DC smoothing and get it back on the staccato portion of my interrupter here and cut it up to 120, you know, it's already just as it is, it's looking pretty close. You know, it's looking pretty close to, you know, how it was with the other coil and how it runs, uh, you know, again on that half bridge. Thing is though, I've just taken this new coil that I've wound with a smaller diameter and I've just tossed it inside the primary that I had for this coil. So I have tuned that primary to this coil and I've just thrown that different secondary inside. I haven't played with the orientation of the primary at all and I just cut it on and that's what the output is. So I highly doubt I got really lucky and that's how, you know, that's the best arrangement for it. So that is to say further tuning of that primary uh, will probably get the output much better. But that seems like a baseline right there. It's just a you know a baseline for just the random setup. The way that I've got the PLL tuned right now is actually not ideal in my opinion because that's how I had it set up for DC. So next thing I'm going to do is try to play around with that to see if I can improve the ramps. The one thing that I'm not 100% sure on is whether I absolutely need to be doing that, you know, running it at the voltage that I plan on running it at. I'm not sure if adjusting it at the much lower voltage is going to be uh, appropriate for when I do cut it all the way up. So that might be something I have to consider there. All right, I've got this thing set up again for the 16-inch uh, art length. The little thingy up there. You know, that's just helping me get a reference of uh, the slight adjustments I'm making here. 120. And it doesn't look like it wants to strike it. But I think I did get it to strike that thing every now and then. Every now and then you get one that comes real, real close. But it doesn't quite want to make it up there. Well, there was just one that I didn't get on camera. So, let's just say it's very rare if that thing's going to strike 16 inches. So, I think the uh, knob on there needs to be adjusted. So, let's see if I can play with that a little bit. So now, after a slight light adjustment on this primary, I basically just, uh, once again, covered it in hot glue. I made it so I could slightly adjust the height of it. And I've moved it up just a hair, and I've adjusted the phase angle very slightly. And by doing that, it seems like I can hit the 16-inch uh, mark now pretty easily. So, cut back up. So, the arcs don't... They don't seem, seems like they kind of want to branch out a little bit more. I'm not really sure why that is. So still, it's really only the occasional one that doesn't want to branch out at some point along the arc path that will, you know, give you that long length. 
So I guess that makes sense. I mean, one part of getting the longest arcs is trying to maintain the cleanest singular arc channel. Because, you know, if it wants to at some point branch out to the side, then you're going to lose length. I'm not real sure how to get it to do that consistently. You see, it does it every now and then. Then, of course, if you speed up the uh, BPS, it becomes a little more erratic. Or I suppose it just looks that way over time. So you can see it doesn't take anywhere near that much on time to get the length, but I'm only pulling what looks like a you know few hundred milliamps more, uh, bringing it up all the way like that. For some reason, the difference between these two coils and the way they would operate, this one gave me a much more punchier sound, uh, and that one just sounds like more of a deep bassy arc all the way up, while this one had that sort of weird punchy sound again. I'm not quite sure if maybe that just had something to do with the this actual jar. The sound waves was bouncing around. I'm not real sure, but I also, I'm also don't really know if that punchy sound was really good or bad. I prefer the smaller coil again, you know, so I'm cool with how that sounds. I'll have to uh, see what I can do to actually get that longer, but that might be satisfactory for 120. So the idea now is seeing, okay, well, can I improve that with this same setup at a higher voltage? So that is one of the things I'm going to work on. I need a different bridge rectifier, get this more isolated and better in an enclosure. And then from there, the deal is questioning whether this coupling would work at much higher voltage.